YouTube, what is good? It's your man Riz from Doing Film Things. So this week I'm continuing to explore with black and white film, looking to practice and really develop a technique with black and white. So this week I shot some Ilford 3200. And this Ilford 3200 was actually provided to me by today's video sponsor, The Cool Film Club. Cool Film Club is a film subscription service that ships directly to your door. The subscriptions vary in price and include either 35 millimeter or 120 film or both. The film is shipped to you in these nice little packages and includes some product information as well so that you can learn about the new films. They also have a nice web store where you can shop for all kinds of different things including film, shirts, stickers, and other cool film related items. Make sure you use the code RIBS in order to get 10% off your next purchase on Cool Film Club. So this roll of 3200 opens up so many possibilities. Because of the 3200 ISO, I basically get a whole bunch of flexibility that I haven't had before in terms of shutter speed, in terms of the scene of light, you know, all those kind of things. So I went ahead and took this film and shot some images at nighttime here in London. We're in lockdown now, so there's basically nobody in the streets, but of course I'm free to walk around and exercise a bit. Here's some of the footage. Shooting this film is so much fun. Because of the flexibility due to the ISO, I can shoot this film as wide open or as closed off as I want in nighttime. I can shoot images wide open at 1.8, 2.8, something like that. But I can also even stop down my lens to about f8 or maybe even f16 in certain scenes at nighttime. So it's awesome to have that flexibility since usually it's the other way around. You're shooting with ISO 200, 400, maybe even 800 and you feel a bit constrained without being able to get really steady kind of clean shots at night. I feel like the most important thing to say about this film is that it has a lot of character. And what do I mean by character? There's two specific things. There's contrast and then there's grain. Specific to contrast, this film packs a big punch. Basically, any image that you have that has a whole bunch of dynamic range is really gonna showcase a lot of strong contrast because your darker end of the film is gonna reach so punchy, it's gonna really have some like deep, deep dark shadow. And then of course, the highlights of your film they're still gonna be um, well exposed and you're gonna have detail, but there's even gonna be contrast within those highlights. Something like clouds, for example. You're gonna see so much texture and so much dimension to them. It's really, really amazing how this film really pulls out all of that contrast. The other part of this film's character is the grain. So the grain is completely unavoidable here. There is so much grain in all of your images, even in the highlights, even in the shadows. It doesn't really matter. And that makes total sense because this film is 3200, as I already mentioned and highly sensitized film like this always displays some very clear visible grain. So that's just part of the package. But for me, it's actually one of the best things about this film. It just adds to that character. You get such a vibe when you look at this film and it really gives you that like classic black and white kind of like, you know, old school film charm. I don't think it's a crutch, you know, I don't rely on that per se, but I really, really appreciate that it's there because for me, sometimes black and white film can fall a bit flat. And especially for me, who's not really that talented with black and white, and I'm still practicing and learning, it's nice to have film that kind of adds a little bit of something in there, just to spice up my images a bit further. Another part of the flexibility of this film is the ability to use zoom lenses. So you know when you use a zoom lens, especially one that zooms in pretty far, you basically have an issue of stability, and shutter speed really, really matters. So with this film, the 3200, and in daylight conditions, I can actually stop down my lens to get a sharper image, and still have a very, very stable shutter speed, somewhere between 1 300th, 1 500th, even 1 1000th, depending on the image. So I actually took this film, put it in my um, Canon EOS 650, I strapped onto there my lens that's 100 to 300, and I took a bunch of images from my balcony. I have a very good view of London from my balcony, the kind of the cityscape, and therefore with the zoom lens, I can kind of zoom in and crop in on certain cool things in the distance. Let's check out some of the footage. Thank you. 
Man, that was a lot of fun. My favorite of these shots are actually the tight shots of the specific buildings that have very strong kind of square geometric shapes. Those buildings, there's a bunch of them right in front of where I live. And they're just so interesting because they're very retro. They have these very boxy kind of look to them, but there's so much kind of play of light in them. There's a lot of spaces for shadows and kind of nooks and hard angles. And then of course, there's these pastel colors all over them, which on the black and white films grayscale just look really, really cool. Kind of just picks up all of the different layers of this building, which otherwise would be a bit boring, I feel like, in color film. This 3200 just adds so much to it, and I really think it makes these buildings look so much better than they would otherwise. So you can tell I really like this film. I don't know, it just really gives a nice vibe when you shoot these images, and I really appreciate that there's so much this film has to offer right out of the box. You don't have to rely on kind of any scanning tricks or any post-processing in Photoshop or Lightroom to really make the images sing. I really appreciate that there's so much to the analog process with this film, and therefore the digital process is just kind of a requirement here for the sake of distributing your images, but there's no requirement for you to kind of take the digital process and further manipulate whatever you got from your analog process. So I really, really enjoy that. And I'm looking forward to printing these images at some point because like I said, I don't really do too much with black and white and I definitely don't print black and white very often, but I think I'm gonna have some fun with these images. There's just so much grain, the contrast, and I think you get some really moody stuff here. So I'm looking forward to that at some point. So I don't hear too much about this film. Obviously people know it exists, but I don't hear people shooting with it or talking about it that much. What's your experience? Have you shot with it before? Do you like this film? Talk to me in the comments. I really wanna know what you have to say. All right, y'all, so that's what I got for this week. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave me a like because it helps so much. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. What are you waiting for? Until the next video, y'all, peace.